So we got him now. One of two members of both the Pro Football Hall of Fame and the Canadian Football Hall of Fame, Warren Moon, joining us from his Seattle office. Hey, Warren, did that CFL news warm your heart out there on the West Coast? Man, you're full of information today. Do you do this every day? I mean, that's a lot of uh, transactions going on right there. I know. We do do it every day. I do it as a show of support and salute to the Canadian Football League because I still don't know if they're going to play or not, Warren. So, yeah, we are doing it every day, and we can't wait for the three-down lead to come back. But, sir, it's Grey Cup week – or, sorry, Super Bowl week, the Wednesday of. Obviously, doesn't look like you're there. What would your normal super yeah, what would your normal Super Bowl week be like for you as a Hall of Famer? I would be down there. I would be down there doing uh, Radio Row, which they probably don't have this year from what I understand. Everything's kind of being done from Zoom. Uh, I'd be down there doing appearances and different things for the NFL as well as some corporate appearances. So I'd be very, very busy at this time uh, just just getting into the week. And then by the weekend, you know, doing a lot of things that have to do with the actual game itself. So this is a different year, a different year for everybody in a lot of different respects. But uh, it's still going to be a great game because you have two really, really good teams, two really talented quarterbacks. And I don't think that's going to mess – with anything, you're going to have 22,000 fans in the state in the stand, so there will be noise, there will be energy. So I think that part of it will be good, but there's no question leading up to it is going to be a little. Well, you know, I know that you do so many interviews. I don't know if you'll remember us talking about this the last time you were on. It was pre NFL season, and you predicted that they would kick off on time, but we weren't sure if they were going to finish. And they did, right? They had to move some games around a little bit, but they got them all in, Warren. Just looking back at the regular season, how did you feel about the job the NFL did pulling it off? Yeah, it's been an amazing job that they've done, uh, especially trying to keep all these players and staff members safe throughout this whole pandemic. But you got to give the players and the uh, the coaches and, and all the staff a lot of credit, too, for, for being disciplined and you know staying away from uh, bad situations that would uh, cause them to maybe get the virus. Uh, Like you said, a few games were moved around, but no games were canceled. We've had every game uh, go all the way through until the, uh, the Super Bowl. So all we have to do is get the Super Bowl played and we have a complete season. And they did it without doing it in a bubble like uh, the NBA did it. They did it traveling all around the country and and taking all these different risks. You've got to really give a lot of people a lot of credit for pulling this thing off. Hey, I'm going to get to the matchup in a minute, Bucks and Chiefs. But there's, you know how loved you are in Canada. So there's a lot of comments coming in from Rachel to Sony. She says, I loved Moon's Cookies back in the day here in Edmonton. What is uh, That's the first I heard of that. What's the story on Moon's Cookies? Well, I started a chocolate chip cookie business when I went to the Eskimos. And uh, it was something I, I've always had an entrepreneurial um, uh, background as far as wanting to have my own business. And and chocolate chip cookies were huge in the United States, Miss Amos and Mrs. Field. But I didn't see anything like that up in Canada. So I had a great cookie recipe because my mother taught me to bake when I was in high school. And um, I used that recipe to start my own cookie business. And I had five stores around the the, uh, Edmonton area. I had one in West Edmonton Mall and the huge mega mall there. And then when I went to the Houston Oilers, I I had five stores in Houston as well. And then I finally gave it up because it was just becoming – too busy for me to try and be an NFL quarterback and run a business at the same time. So I ended up selling it to Mrs. Fields, but it was a lot of fun. A lot of people love the cookies and people still ask me about those cookies all the time. So they must have made an impression on people. Oh, that is amazing. I'm just I'm just a podunk farm kid from Saskatchewan. We didn't get any out here. Now I'm feeling left out. Uh, I should have won games, you know, and maybe it would have made the crowd like not boo me as much as when I came out the tunnel. I should say you're loved in Canada, but not here. Somebody wrote that in earlier. I said Warren always kicked our butt, which we know. But Warren, somebody also asked your take on Deshaun Watson, if you don't mind, and you might know a little bit about it being a quarterback in Houston. Where do you stand on that situation? Yeah, Deshaun and I are really good friends, and uh, I I haven't reached out to him about this. He knows I'm available if if he needs me for any advice. Uh, It's a shame that this situation uh, and this relationship is not working. It's falling apart because Deshaun's been a great ambassador for for the city of Houston. He's a great uh, citizen and person, and he's also a fantastic football player. But but 
a lot of things have happened within the organization and, and it's just kind of soured him over the last few years. And, and he just wants to move on and go to a, an organization where he feels like is more in line with what his thinking is about winning football. So I think that's where they are right now. Um, he is under contract, so uh, he wants to be traded and they don't have to trade him. So it's going to come down to whether Deshaun wants to sit out or whether the Houston Texans at some point say, okay, we're going to go ahead and try and get what we can for him. But it's unfortunate that they can't work this out because I think Deshaun is great for the city of Houston, but uh, I just think he's uh, played his last game there. Have you seen a change, Warren, in the players? I mean, obviously you have because they have changed. And I ask you because I know you mentor them. I think we talked about Keith Price, or as we called him around here, Teeth Price, because he's always smiling, the former Washington Husky. And he told me what you did for him. They just don't put up with crap anymore. And that's probably a good thing. Like, have you noticed that with these young players? Yeah, I have. They feel like they understand their power now. They understand that they have a little bit more power than they used to, and especially quarterbacks. Um, um, but because of the way the contracts are, are geared now, there's more guaranteed money in these deals. And and uh, I, I, I just think they feel like with their – with their voices that they have in the in the social media world where they can put whatever their feelings are right out there into the fan base. They just have a lot more to say and they have a lot more um, uh, power because of that. So I'm happy for it because there was a time where you the NFL just said, you play here or you don't play anywhere else, where now players are starting to have a little bit more of a voice and a little bit more of a say-so about where they work. Yeah, you know what, I don't – I'm kind of happy about it, too. Initially, I didn't like it. Then I thought, we put up with so much crap. Me, one thousandth of what you put up with. Imagine if you had a voice back in the day, right? Like these kids do now. I can't imagine what you would have said. Now, the last time you were on, I asked you for a Saskatchewan memory, and you said you remember the wind howling outside your hotel window at the Hotel Saskatchewan. We got an Argo fan wrote in, Chris Bird. He says, does Mr. Moon have any good stories related to playing at CNE Stadium in Toronto, by the way, he kicked our butts here too. What, what do you remember about playing in Toronto? Um, I, we used to love going to Toronto because for us in Edmonton, coming from you know a relatively small city, that was like going to the big city, like going from, say, uh, I don't know, uh, somewhere in, in Idaho to go to New York City. So <laughs> we, um, we really relished it. I mean, the guys, I'll tell you one thing they really look forward to. We didn't have a Wendy's hamburger uh joint in uh, in edmonton so the first place everybody went to once we got off the airplane we went straight to the wendy's over by by uh eaton center and and everybody was getting hamburgers and fries and all this all this junk food the night before a game but that's what we look forward to was going to the big city being able to have a wendy's hamburger and then go to eaton center and walk around and see a huge mall like that it was it was just a beautiful city a clean city and we felt like we were in the big city when we got to Toronto, and that's why we wanted to play well when we were there. Boy, there's, uh, I started something. We got a flood of questions coming in, and I'm not going to keep you too long. But Richard Allender, I believe he's in Oklahoma, he has written in and says, Mr. Moon, thoughts on NFL rivalries versus CFL rivalries? And if I may, Doug Flutie on that topic said they're no different. To Flutie, they weren't. How do you see? You know what we're talking about here. Edmonton, Calgary versus you know, whoever, Seattle, San Francisco, something like that. There was nothing bigger than uh, Edmonton, Calgary, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, <laughs> I played in, in huge rivalries in the NFC Central where I was with Houston, and we had rivalries against the Cleveland Browns and also the Pittsburgh Steelers. But I tell you what, when, when we played on Labor Day in, uh, in, in Calgary, there was nothing like it. I mean, there's people outside your window in the street chanting so we couldn't sleep at night. There's people flipping the uh, – the fire alarm, so we would wake up in the middle of the night. Anything they could do to disrupt us to get ready for that game, they just added fuel to the fire. And then we wanted to win so much so much more because of what people were trying to do to us to distract us for that football game. So that rivalry was intense. You felt it in the stands. Uh, when you came onto the football field, you felt it from the Calgary Stampeders. And we had some great battles over the years. From our intern, Alan, the Asian sensation, he says, Hey, Mr. Moon. What's your opinion on this year's draft for quarterbacks? It's a good one. It is a good draft for quarterbacks. Uh, you, you look at uh, you know the top of the draft. It seems like everybody wants to go with Trevor Lawrence from from uh, Clemson, and, and they probably should. Um, you know, 
the kid from uh, from BYU is, is up there. I think the Chase kid Fields. From Fields yeah. from Ohio. Kid from Ohio Justin State, Fields. Chase Justin Fields, yeah. Those are three legitimate guys. And then the kid, uh, Mac, Mac Jones from Alabama, he's a really good player as well. You saw what he was able to do this year as a Heisman Trophy finalist. So there's four really good first-round type quarterbacks, and who knows, before the whole draft process is over, there might be another one that sneaks in there. So every year, quarterback is going to be a position that everybody has to have because of the way the rules are, are geared in the NFL right now. You've got to have a good quarterback in order to win. So there's four good young ones in, in the draft this year that uh, you can kind of build off of one of those guys. All right. I got to get back on track with Super Bowl talk here. So thank you, Warren, for answering their questions. Uh, and of course, it is Super sure. Week. Our coverage brought to you by Original 16 Canadian Ultra Beer. Uh, so to the matchup, is it, is, is it too simple to say Brady versus Mahomes? Is that a disservice to the other factors of this game? Well, it, it always comes, like I said, to the quarterbacks just earlier in that question about the draft. The quarterbacks are going to be focal to any game going on, especially in this era of football, because you're throwing the football all over the place. The running game, it's just part of it to keep the defenses off balance. And it's important, but it's definitely not as important as having that trigger man. So uh, I see why they get all the attention. But, yeah, there's going to be more going on in this game besides those two guys. You, you look at the uh, Tampa Bay defense. They have really played well pretty much all season, and they've really taken their game up to a new level in the playoffs. Uh, a very dominant pass rush up front. Um, they play a physical brand. You know, Todd Bowles, their defensive coordinator, loves to attack. So I don't know if he's going to be able to attack as much against uh, Kansas City because of their speed. Because when you you attack and you don't get there and you're in man-for-man coverage, you've got a Tyreek Hill or a Kelsey or – Sammy Watkins, those guys are flying through the secondary. So there's a lot of speed that you have to worry about. If you miss one guy, all of a sudden it's a touchdown. So he's going to have to play a checkers match with with Kansas City. Sometimes when he's going he's going to pressure. Sometimes he's got to lay back and try and uh, make Patrick Mahomes be be uh, patient. And it's the same thing with um, with uh, Kansas City. Their defensive front has got to put pressure on Tom Brady and make him uncomfortable in this game. If they don't make him uncomfortable, he'll pick you apart. So. The defenses are going to be huge in this ballgame, especially the front fours trying to put pressure on these two quarterbacks and make them do things they don't want to do. Warren, since let's just stay in the quarterback vein. What's the better story? Tom Brady getting his revenge, winning his seventh Super Bowl, but not with the Patriots, or the kid, Mahomes, becoming the next one by winning this Super Bowl? What's what's the better story? Are you pulling for one over one over the other? Or what do you what do you think is the better story? You know, I'm I'm pulling for Kansas City because that was where I played my last uh, my last year, and and I have a lot of good relationships there. I know Patrick Mahomes, uh, you know, pretty well. Uh, he's a fantastic kid. I know his mom and his brother, and um, so so that part of it I love. I love the organization. Tom Brady's a, a young guy that I you know I met when he came into the league, and and you know I I was able to give him some advice early in his career. Uh, just a, a outstanding person, really good young man. But um, I just um, I'm I'm rooting for Kansas City. So uh, I just think that the better story would be if if Tom Brady was to win because everybody used to say, can he win without Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots? And he would show that he could if he won the game. So that's a huge story, especially for a guy 43 years old. I think everybody assumes Patrick Mahomes is is supposed to win this football game so it's not as big a surprise or anything like that but tom brady going to a new team in a pandemic 43 years old winning another championship that that's probably a bigger story but i'm rooting for the kansas city chiefs do you have a prediction i think it's going to be a high scoring game and i think kansas city has just a little bit more firepower i think they win the game something like 35 <laughs> 30. i got it here uh, cause I got, I got bucks 37, 30. I'm writing everybody's down 35, 30. You said, right. All right. Uh, hey, nobody will remember though. Warren. Hey, 35, 31, 35, 31. Okay. I gotcha. I got to just say this, man, just before I let you go nine time pro bowler, five time great cup champion. You and Bud Grant are the only two in both the pro football hall of fame and the Canadian football hall of fame. I said, you were the only one yesterday in the Canadian football hall of fame guys wrote me and said, no, no, no. Bud Grant's in there too. What is it? <laughs> Only player. Only player. That's what I. That's what I told him. What does it mean to you to be in both halls of fame, Warren? 
You, you know, it's not like something that I, that I felt like I've done something special from every other player that's played football because every other player didn't have an opportunity to play in both leagues. But I did, and uh, because I was able to show that I could play at a high level in both leagues, that's something I'm very, very proud of, that no matter what offense you put me in, no matter what team you put me on, I was going to uh, try and be successful. So that was just a, um, a tribute to my to my hard work that I've put in and, and all the great players that I played around that helped me get to that. But uh, that's something I'm proud of, that no matter where you put me, I was able to still play at a high level. Awesome. I'm glad you are proud of it. You should be. And I, I really enjoy our visit, sir. I appreciate it. Enjoy the game. I look forward to our next chat and stay safe down there. Yeah, you do the same. Have a great uh, Super Bowl weekend, and uh, hopefully we get through this whole pandemic and get back to normal here pretty soon. <laughs> Sooner Everybody than – your mask out there. Yeah, we will. Absolutely. Thanks, Warren. Mr. Moon, right. Take care. At, as viewer Tom Geiger writes, and he says, when the majority of fan questions start with Mr. Moon, you know the level of respect we all have for him. Oh, yeah. So, as I said, nine-time Pro Bowler, uh, five-time Great Cap champion, CFL Most Outstanding Player, Two-time NFL passing yards leader, Walter Payton, NFL Man of the Year. It's that long. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.